welcome back. Today I wanted to show you the uh, motor rack hitch I bought for uh, carrying the uh, motorcycle. And uh, it came with no instructions, so I had to go online. That's no big deal nowadays. Uh, save paper, I guess. And it went together fairly easy. Not too impressed with the powder coating. I don't even know if it is powder coated. You can see that some chips here and uh, the paint has flaked off. You can see here just a poor job on the uh, paint job. Uh, I'll touch it up with some some spray paint, but uh, basically it's it's together. That's what it looks like. I'm going to mount it on the truck. This is the heavy duty model, which really means that it's you know just thicker uh, brackets here, thicker steel. Uh, it has a 450 pound weight rating, so it has the highest rating, and it has the two inch lower uh, kit. Or really, all it is is this is down at the bottom. If the, you get one that doesn't have the lowering kit, it, this bracket here is just a little bit higher. So that's the difference there. And the other reason I got this rack is because the way it grabs the uh, underbelly of the bike. So the skid plate's gonna sit right on it. The wheels will hang down lower, which will hopefully um, not impede with my vision of my truck. Because uh, the racks that you just roll right on, they um, sit up so much higher. And that's the name of the rack, Moto, uh, what? Moto Jack Rack. Moto Jack Rack. That's kind of a tongue twister. Anyway, I'll get set it up on the truck and uh, show you how it's going to work. There you can see I put the hitch on the front of the truck. It's a torque lift. That's a thousand pound rating. So I'm uh, should be uh, good with the, the new uh, rack. See that. That works. Oh, we'll get the rack. So this is just my uh, charger I've plugged in for my battery charger. This thing's pretty heavy too. It's 50 or 60 pounds anyway. Just slide it in. Attach that later. So I have the pins that go in here. So they go like so. Just grab the foot pegs of the uh, the bike, and this just tightens up against these pins. So that's how that works. So hydraulic jack. Down there, so it's not as low as I wanted. Still fairly high off the ground because my hitch is so high. I'll just get a measuring tape. Okay, the rack is going to be still 16 inches off the ground. That's what I was afraid of. It's going to be pretty low. I'm going to have to still lift the bike up on here, which is going to be hard for me. I'll have to figure that out. Then, to raise the bike up. That's awfully high. The other pin goes through here and that locks it into place. Yeah, it locks in through the nut there. So that is super high. That's uh, going to be a bit of a problem. I'm 34 inches up off the ground. Looks okay, but the bike is going to be sitting up so high. I'm not sure how that's going to work going to be right in my view. Um, that's what I was afraid of. I can get a drop 
pitch on the for my receiver there, but then that's gonna affect the weight rating. The paint, you know, it's already flaked off for me assembling it here. It's chipped. Um, yeah, sure, I can uh, touch that up, but I would expect the quality to be a little better. I paid 6.25 US. Uh, free shipping to the states, and then I had a buddy pick it up in in the states and bring it across the border. So some duty and brokerage and all that, because they um, they don't ship to Canada. So that was a hassle just getting it. Um, but this is what I was afraid of. I don't know how this is going to work. So I'll just take a measurement here. I've got. From the top of the hitch, and where the bike will sit on the bottom, to the hood, that's about 20, 22 inches roughly. So I'll go to the bike, and 22 inches from the bottom of the skid plate is middle of the tank. There you go. So it's at the top of the tank on 35 inches, roughly 30, yeah, let's say 33 inches. So 33 inches here is going to put me oh shit, right in my, my view. I don't know if I'm going to get pulled over if, if I'm... Uh, if it's that that high up, yeah, shit. Anyway, I'll uh, get the bike on there and see what it's gonna look like. You can see, I gotta lift it up quite a ways. Uh, that's 375 pounds. So that is gonna be a challenge for me. Not that strong anymore. Uh, okay, well, I'll get it on there, and then see how high it is, and then, I don't know, maybe a plan B, but plan A is not working out the way I hoped. Okay, I'll set the camera down, and see what I can do. Now sitting on the brake pedal, that's certainly better, but uh, okay, got to let it back out so the brake pedal kind of clears. Okay, that's that's sitting better, so I'll put the these pegs here like this. Brake pedal extender is kind of hitting now, but it is working. Scratch that a little bit. We left the scratches at the end of the day with this. Oh yeah, nice. Uh, hits the brake, or I mean the kickstand. I can shave that off. That's not the end of the world. This one, no problem. Okay, so get that tight. Yeah, I'll show you what's going on over here. That's how it looks there. 
here. So it goes into the foot peg. Got the lock, whatever you call it, lock bolt there. So it's sitting on the brake, the brake lever. That's probably not the best. Uh, I don't like that. You can kind of see that. It's sitting on the front, which is fine. But there's a bit of a gap there, so I might have to put something under there to uh, have it sit on the skid plate. And Okay, well, that's the bike up there. That's, that's freaking high. That's going to be a problem. So, you can see the issue. A tank bag and take off, that's, that's no big deal, but that is... Uh, that's going to be a problem. Yeah. Uh, hmm. That has to come down a lot. Uh, certainly the back end of the bike is easier to see, but man, that's, uh, that's really blocking my view. There's the, the dash in the, in the trunk. Well, you can't see the glare, but that's kind of where my head will be in the vehicle. So that'll be what I'm looking at. Uh, I think that's going to be a problem. Shit. So I'm going to have to come down quite a bit to be able to view. That's, that's the problem. I'm going to have to be, yeah, it's got to come down a foot. You know, this angle. So that's the plan is, you know, cut the camper and put the bike on the front and we're set. But, oh my God, that's not working out the way I had planned. How oh, high am I off the ground? I'll measure that. Wheels 22 inches off off the ground, so 12 inches. Say I got something that was a 12 inch drop. Twelve inches. Yeah, if I could drop it 12 inches. If I could drop it a foot, that would be enough. It would be quite a bit out of my view. Um, it'd be easier to load for sure. Cause it would be, I wouldn't have to lift it up so high. So that definitely will make a difference. But the problem is, is it's going to, how much weight is it, the leverage on the hitch? The hitch is rated a thousand pounds. So I'm not so much worried about that. It's whatever drop I use to get it down, the force that's going to be on that is incredible. So I don't know um, what I'm going to do. Okay, I'll just show you how I'm going to drop this. You take this safety pin out. Something deal. Take this. I already lost a cotter pin with this. Didn't even have one, actually. Anyway, um, just slowly release this and she just nicely glides down so the way thing works is pretty slick that's not the issue it's just that's almost the height that 
I could have it at. Hey, now I got an idea. I wonder if I just leave it. Ideally, that height right there is almost well. Actually, the front tire is a little, uh, a little too close to the ground for my comfort. But if I just jack it up part way, lock it. Oh, there's there's a lot of weight there. You know, jack it up like that. It sticks it further out. You can see the not as strong when it's stretched out like that. But that definitely is you know, more what I want. So kind of straight out. That's that's like perfect. That's not impeding my view. That gives me some clearance. So I'm pretty happy with that. So the challenge is what's the leverage for the stress on it extended like that? The perfect height, how much it's off the ground, and for visibility, the headlights, you can see. You know, the high beams is no problem really. I think that wouldn't be an issue. Here, lights through where the fender is, so that wouldn't be an issue. Um, yeah, just how far it extends out. So it's gonna it's gonna bounce around. Oh, there's some flex on it there. Oh, that's going to be bouncing around for mile after mile after mile. Um, it's heavy duty steel, but I'd rather be over engineered than under engineered. Imagine if that broke and you kind of ran over it. That wouldn't be a good scene. As you can see, you know, I've got the bike on there really concerned about how um, it's going to work with get extended like that. It's supposed to go all the way up and you know lock into place but it takes it up too high and uh, you can get a better angle like this. Like this height it's perfect. You know I've got good reasonable visibility. The headlights aren't um, really impacted too much um, so that is kind of the perfect position. So do I do a drop hitch? Um, so I can... Yeah, the more I think about it, a drop hitch would probably be better because it solves two problems. One, it drops it down, which is what I need. And then the... Um, um, so I you know maintain my visibility when I'm driving. But also what it does is gets it lower so I don't have to struggle so much getting the the bike onto the rack itself because you saw there earlier it's I have, have to lift it and uh, you know I kind of balanced it on the kickstand and that wasn't too bad but still um, you know why work harder let's work smarter right uh, and you know it'd be nice to have it on the back but the camper extends as you can see and then we've got the step so it would have to go so far back. Oh, I'm trying to get my camera. Sorry, guys. Um, it'd have to just go too far back. Uh, it, it's like three feet. So that even makes the problem worse. And the back's loaded up pretty good. I'd rather distribute the weight a little bit and put it on the front. So I think my idea is right on the front. It's just getting the, the height, height right. So I just, I guess, need a really heavy-duty drop hitch. Um, because the the hitch itself on the truck that I put on has a thousand pound rating, so I I think that um, is not going to be the weak link. It's the hitch itself because um, that has a 450 uh, 450 pound rating. 
So I think that's the direction I'm going to go. I'm going to try to get a beefy drop hitch and put the rack onto that and get it lower for loading and then it's going to drop it down a bit for my you know vision from the um, for the top of the bike. Okay, we're keep going on it. We'll get back to you. Made a few modifications to make the hitch work for me. And one of the things I did was I changed all the bolts uh, out to grade eight. The ones that are, which is the highest strength, and the ones that came with it were, they were called the 307, I painted it, what was it, 307A? Basically, they're uh, the bottom of the, the barrel, but I guess they were designed well enough to handle the load, but I'm changing things a little bit, so I went with some strong bolts. So the changes that I made was, when it was extended out, it uh, doesn't seem like a lot, but it was made it really bouncy. Really, you could see the, the flex in it. So what I did was I cut two and a half inches off and drilled new holes to bring the whole hitch closer to the truck. Um, and then also this, I drilled new holes and moved it to the front instead of where the original hole was to because uh, of the angle the way things go here once you jack it up and it was so tight um, i grinded down the original jack that it came with kind of kind of dumb uh, but i was just trying to get a little narrower because it was so tight to my bumper which i'll show you Anyway, I grinded too much off and now it started to leak. Right here I grinded through it, the oil started coming out. So, I wrecked that and I went and bought a new one at Canadian Tire, it was only 20 bucks. Two ton, same thing, I actually like the color better. Uh, so that, and then the other thing, because I'm going to have it mounted almost, or lifted up to a boat, not quite that high, it'll be a little lower. But what I did, and I'll show you on the truck, is I made these brackets, which went and just bought some stock, and it's virtually the same thickness as the other ones that are you know, for the heavy duty model. And it's gonna go here, and then lock into place here. Which this is the factory bolt hole. And I'm just gonna put a pin in here. So once, you know, I put it all the way down, load the bike, I'll jack it up to the height that I need, and then just put the, you know, put this bracket like this, and this will lock it into place, and that way it's not going to go up or down, um, it'll just be locked. And by shortening it and bringing it all closer to the truck, it did make a big difference, it just didn't have as much uh, flex in, in the whole setup. Okay, so I grabbed the pin and just put this in a little bit higher. It's hard to do this. There, so I just put the pin in. Oh, yeah, there, it'll work. Okay. So you can see, put a pin in there. So that locks it in place. Can't go higher, can't go lower. And it'll transfer some of the weight from here on this bracket to the post, which is a much stronger point. Um, I know this bracket is, or this hitch is meant to go all the way up and then lock into place. You put the pin in here with it fully uh, extended up. But I can't, that doesn't work for me because it puts my bike too high. Um, there are some drop hitches, which when I'm in the States, I might look at doing that. Uh, there's just more of those kind of things available there. Okay, you can see where I'm at. I'm going to raise this up a little bit. Let me just put the camera down. 
down. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. My wheels are about, you know, it's about 10 inches from the ground, which isn't bad research I did for obstacles. Okay, here's here's the rack with the uh, modifications I made to get it to a height that will not impede my vision. And by raising it up, it gets the front up where I've got lots of clearance. I got about 16 inches, so I shouldn't be running into any curbs, anything like that. And Go over the changes again. What I did, shortened it two and a half inches here, so it gets rid of some of the leverage by being further out. I added this brace here to lock it into place uh, with a pin, so that's easy to, to do that. And uh, uh, that locks it in, you know, from bouncing. Um, when I want to get the bike off, pull the pin and um, lower it down. Getting it off is easy, it's just getting it on because it doesn't go down quite low enough. You need to go down another five inches. So the only thing, the way I can get that to happen is to get a drop hitch, which I still may look into doing when I get to the States and uh, get put the drop hitch on here, get it down a few more inches. And then if I do that, of course, I'll have to change this, might have to cut it shorter to get it up. Um, anyway, that'll that'll be it for another uh, another video. Hope this helps you if you're looking at getting something for the front of your vehicle. And uh, yeah, just one last thing that the hitch that I put on the front of the truck was a torque lift and it's rated at a thousand pounds. So that's a good strong hitch. And uh, if you wanted to look at getting a different hitch that drops down, which at the time I didn't want to cut into the balance, and uh, um, the ones that drop down, they have a lower tongue rating. So they got the highest tongue rating. I went with this style, which I have a video on. You can check my other videos. Uh, so everything's kind of a compromise, but um, drop hitch might be the way to go to be able to lift this up to, as intended to lock it up uh, but for me I don't even think that would work still because then I would definitely be uh, too high and the bike will be impeding uh, my vision and that's why I'm dealing with what I'm dealing now is because the bike raised up uh, too high okay ran a heavy chain through the front tow hook through the frame, I guess, of the bike, through the tire. So I think that is about as secure as you can get. Um, and the front handlebars are locked too. Okay, just when I thought it was done, um, had to strap it down. As you can see, I kind of strapped it to the skid plate because it had a little bit of wobble back and forth on here. So I strap that down i strapped the handlebar down to the tow hook over there and then the back just kind of looped it under the hitch to the tow hook here and now it's there's a little bit of movement but it's not it's just the whole thing kind of moving a little bit um well, hopefully that will be pretty solid going down the road it'll just be um, hitting a bump it might shake around a little bit but hopefully the straps will kind of hold it in place now I'll put the tarp on it and I'm not sure if I'm going to drive with the tarp if the uh, if it's kind of <clears throat> if it's cold out or cool out I'll put the tarp on leave it on and you know so the truck doesn't overheat but if it's hot out then I'd probably take the tarp off just to allow more air to move through to the radiator um, 
kind of goes through by the back tire over the seat a little bit and kind of through here it's got a path so that's how the setup looks I think it looks pretty sharp and uh, it's out of my way so I think that heights perfect height my challenge is is getting it on there but I'm gonna keep working on that that's not gonna work because it driving because it blocks the headlights signal lights makes it a little harder to see out of the uh, windshield um, so it's only gonna work for if I want to throw it over at night if it's raining something like that but for driving uh, the tarps a no-go thanks for uh, watching uh, I'm gonna wrap this video up I'll hopefully do an update um, along the way on our trip to Baja let you know how the hitch is holding up and uh, we posted a few videos of our, our trip along the way and uh, as always hope you enjoy what I'm putting out there any ideas things you would like me to cover cover them differently let me know I'd like your comments always want to try and improve the channel as much as I can and uh, hopefully find it entertaining hopefully you find it informative helps you with some of your projects anyway like and subscribe and uh, we'll see you on the next one thanks again <laughs>